What's up guys, Jake Salisman, Blue Collar Outdoors, and today we're putting two very, very unique broadheads side by side in the Toxic and the Pharmacon, both from Flying Arrow Archery. They're both seven and eights cut in diameter. I think this is a newer version of the Toxic, but let's get them out. Let's get them on an arrow. Let's get ready to shoot them in some gel, and let's see which one of these surprises us. Stay tuned. This is how they look side by side on the arrow. As you can tell, this is the Toxic. The head on it is extremely big compared to the blade size. And where the blades start in relation to the tip, there's a huge gap here. That actually will help you in penetration on angled shots. The Pharmacon, it looks like they shortened up that tip. They made it, actually it's sharper. I like this tip better than the Pharmacon. And then it looks like they added uh, their thinner blades it looks to be. Yeah, they're definitely thinner, and they're interchangeable. So that's what it looks like the differences are. I mean, when you get them side by side, you can definitely tell. This is a more compact design, but at the end of the day, all that matters is how do they shoot, are they accurate, and how do they look in the gel. So today, I'm going to be using my VXR 78.5 pound draw, 27 inch draw length. I know, I got short arms. But... It's sending these gold tip kinetic chaos. These are 476 grain arrows, 300 spine. It's going 280 and a half feet per second. So let's see what they do in the gel. But first, we got the sever set up to take some abuse. We're going to shoot them, see how they fly, see if they're accurate, and then we'll put them in the gel. Stay tuned. Okay, first up, I had to actually look. First up, we got the Pharmacon, just accuracy test. I'm just going to be putting it dead center. Let's see how they fly. There's zero wind. Wow, light crosswind, so it should be minimal interference. So here we go. And just as I say that, the wind picks up. Good? Yeah. Low right. All right, so the Pharmacon shot low right. Now let's see how this one shoots. This is the Toxic. And I forgot to mention, both of these broadheads are 100 grain. Same wind conditions, 20 yards. Here we go. That toxic flew a little better. Okay, so just taking one shot with each at 20 yards. I was aiming dead center on both. Neither of them flew like darts. The toxic flew a little bit better. But let's get them out. Let's get the gel ready. Let's put these suckers in the gel. I've actually been eager to see how these reticle core wound channels Look in ballistics gel. Stay tuned. Correction. To my eye, it looked like this did not fly like a dart. This one flew dead true. Dead money. This one was low right. So I got to remember that when we put it in the gel. But shooting in the sever, the sever didn't enjoy these guys' presence. So let's see what the gel thinks. All right. First up, I, th I believe the newer generation of the Toxic. This is Gen 2. Drop a comment below. Let me know for sure. I'm not familiar. So... Here we go. This one, I believe, shot low right. So we'll aim high left. 20 yards. Hopefully I don't shoot my freaking camera. Yeah. Where did high, right, high left, where you were aiming. Really? Yes. Interesting. I can't even see it. That's it there. Cool. So that time, that... Well, Pharmacon flew true. I was aiming high left to adjust for it, and uh, it hit there. So we'll put the Toxic on the right. This will be the time this doesn't fly right, and I hit that arrow. Just watch and see. Here we go. Toxic. I believe the Gen 1 of these two brothers, if you will. 20 yards. That flew way right. Way right. All right, so that flew way right. I called it. I knew it. I don't like the design of these at all. A little bit of wind can throw them off. All right, so they're in here. Let's start with the cut on contact on these because it's pretty cool. As you can see, this is a Pharmacon. And, uh, you know, put a pretty good hole in there. And then it closed up really quick, which is weird. Then the Toxic actually put a better hole in 
than the Pharmacon. As you can see here, about two inches in, it actually bubbles it out. That's pretty neat. That's a first. Where that bubbles out, you can see it's, it's blowing air in the pocket. But then shortly after that, it stops. So the weird thing is, all this coolness right here, all the cool thing, the reticle core, stops. And then it just sucked it right down. And this gel block is actually not that cold. It's like 50-some degrees out. So it's not cold enough that it's going to shrink down. It has that kind of radical core uh, wound channel, they say. It goes further. This Pharmacon, it only got, I don't know, an inch and a half, and then it closed up. And I do see that there is some good tears right there. Let me see if this is, feels a little better. There is some good tearing right there, but... I don't know. To me, it's not that impressive. So I'll shoot the, both these broadheads again. We'll come back and revisit this test uh, when it's in the summer. But I just wanted to get these in the gel. Okay, so regarding these broadheads, would I shoot either of them? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. There's a lot better designs on the market. Uh, I don't like the small cut. I don't really see what the benefit is of the Radical Core technology. Guys, if, if any of y'all shoot these and they work for you, don't change a thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I see a lot of comments when we test a broadhead and it, it doesn't fit our personal preferences. Just remember, each one of these videos, whether it's Moose, myself, or the rare occurrence Hawk actually tests a broadhead, is our, whoever's reviewing the broadhead, it's their personal opinion on the broadhead. We've just seen a lot of broadheads in gel. We've tested a lot of heads, so we got a good base, but like I said, if it works in your setup, don't change a thing. However, I think these, there's a lot of influences on these, especially in their design, as you can see here. I don't like that design, being that if you get a heavy crosswind or anything, it could change the trajectory of this broadhead easily. I just, in my opinion, I don't think these broadheads, they, they, the cons outweigh the pros. I just don't think they're going to be that accurate, and the cut's really not that impressive. But, like I said, we will revisit this test when it's warmer out so we can take away all the, the doubts about the gel being not warm enough. So we will redo this. But, I don't know. There's not too much difference between these two. So I believe this is the OG. Drop a comment below if I'm wrong. I would shoot this, if I absolutely had to, I would shoot this over this. I think the penetration was better, the wound channel was better, the accuracy is the same on each, it's inconsistent. That's really all there is to say about that, ladies and gents. If you haven't yet, smash the thumbs up button. If this is your first video with us, this is what we do. We love testing broadheads in ballistics shell, or durability or accuracy tests as well. We do a lot on the channel, so if you haven't, Check out our content, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We upload Monday and Wednesday during season, Monday, Wednesday, Friday during the off season. As those of you that have been here a while subscribed, they'll tell you, hit that notification bell, it's extremely helpful because you never quite know when we're gonna throw in extra videos. Could be any day, you just don't know. So notification bell, you don't miss out on any new fresh vids. All right, but this is Jay Sleesman, Blue Collar Outdoors. As always, guys, catch you on the next one.